Today I'm going to be reading from Slacker by Gordon Corman, chapter 27, Cameron Boxer. It was ill, even knowing that evil McKill people was out there somewhere waiting to pounce. The planet was in ruins, its capital city ablaze, which burned magenta because of the chemical content of the atmosphere. Our fleet had ringed the alien world with orbiting lasers, careful to avoid the clouds, which were made of pure nitroglycerin vapor and would explode on contact. It was total victory. All that remained was to capture the insectoid president and remove his scepter of office, which was surgically implanted in his thorax. I leaned forward on the basement couch, my thumb quivering over the button that would launch the final assault. Waiting for your command, said Borge in my ear. Would you believe it? I shut the game off. It was nothing against Borge. I thought about the voices that were missing. Chub Chucks, Pavels, and it just wasn't good anymore. Are you crazy? I wanted to scream at myself. You're on the verge of beating the entire game with evil McKill people on the other side. His gamer tag is right up there on the list of opponents. Take him out. Next stop, rule the world. It was no use. The lifestyle I had worked 13 years to perfect was in worse shape than the alien surface on the screen, trashed and smoldering, about to be blasted into vapor and sucked down the nearest black hole. It was all because of that stupid ZD. If only I had heard mom and taken it out of the oven, I would never have had to invent the positive action group in the first place. The PAG? That was why Chuck wasn't talking to me and why I wasn't talking to Pavel. And it was why Dr. LaPierre was calling my parents. It hadn't happened yet, but every time the phone rang, my head practically exploded. I could tell mom and dad that I wasn't the person riling everybody up on the illegal PAG webpage. But they were sure to ask questions, and eventually I would have to lie to cover up the fact that I didn't care about the PAG, and I never had. Or I could protect my other lies by lying again and confessing to the web page, but then I'd be copping to something I didn't even do. No, there was only one way out of this mess. I was going to have to abandon my principles and resort to honesty. It wasn't me, but desperate times call for desperate measures. A lump formed in my throat, something roughly the size of a bowling ball. I hadn't created the PAG just for giggles, you know. I had been defending my gaming system and my lifestyle. When I came clean to mom and dad, I had to figure they would nix my sweet setup in the basement, and that might just be starters. My eyes traveled from the controller in my hand to the darkened screen to the console itself. They were all turned off. That had been my choice in the middle of the best part of my favorite game, minutes from the ultimate victory. I had never done that. Not ever. Not even while fire axes were breaking down our front door. That had to mean something. I dropped the controller like it was white hot and went upstairs in search of my parents. They were in the front hall, admiring the new door and complaining that sycamore sanitation hadn't taken away the old plywood, which was still leaning up against our empty trash cans at the curb. Oh, how I wished it was gone. The surface was covered in graffiti, most of it about how awesome the PAG was and how awesome I was too. And now I was about to blow everything sky high by telling my parents that the whole thing had been a giant fake. Mom, Dad, can I talk to you? My mouth was made of flannel, my tongue too dry to generate sound. It's about the positive action group. I started it. That part wasn't a lie, but it wasn't like I let you guys believe. I was determined to spill my guts. I was going to confess that the PAG had never been a way to get involved for real, but a scam to make it look that way. I'd lay out how Mr. Fanjet had gotten wind of it and had turned it into an actual club, and suddenly kids were coming out of the woodwork to join up. I would explain the part where we got famous because of Audra Klinkner, and everybody in school wanted to be a pagger. I would tell them about the mystery hacker who took over the web page, and I would give them the unhappy ending where we got shut down for what the Friends of Fuzzy did. And the only pagger who didn't mind was me. And now I was in trouble because the mystery hacker wasn't stopping. 
The only part I would leave out was the worst part because I didn't want to think about it. And I was pretty sure the, the hacker was Pavel and that I was fighting with my two best friends. It would be a long speech for me, probably the most that I'd ever spoken into a not into a headset. And the consequences would be huge. You're banned from video games. You're grounded for life. You're being sent to Devil's Island. You'll be hanged by the neck until dead, dead, dead. But why weren't they paying any attention to me? Didn't they realize it was I was about to tell all? Are you guys even listening to me? Uh, yeah, of course, Cam. My mother was pale and tired. We're just a little distracted, that's all. You've probably heard that the state is taking down our freeway ramp on Saturday. It's not good news for the store. It was like my eyes were opening for the first time. Here they were, struggling to keep a family business afloat when everything was going wrong for them. They were putting in 14-hour days at work and worrying about where customers were going to come from when the main highway dropped everybody off at the mall. Was it any surprise that my problems weren't exactly uppermost in their minds? Anyway, my dad sighed, we, we've got some big decisions ahead of us. We'll probably have to downsize the showroom. It might even make some sense to try to sell it if we can find a buyer. I'm sorry, Cam, we've got a lot going on. And as terrible as I felt for their worries and their troubles, I couldn't keep the thought from bubbling to the surface. I'm in the clear. Of course, Dr. LaPierre was going to call one of these days, but he was going to accuse me of the website thing, and I was innocent of that. No. No more ducking and dodging. Mom and Dad deserve the truth. Maybe they were too stressed out to process it now, but even if everything went bad and they lost their store and had to put our lives back together again, sooner or later there would come a time when they had the right to know. Okay, I'll write them a letter. When something was right there in black and white, it couldn't be ignored. And if it didn't sink in today, the message would still be there tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? There wasn't even a single blank piece of paper anywhere in my book bag or in my room. I usually did my homework on my computer and turned it on, or turned it in online. It was Melody who wrote everything out in beautiful, flowing cursive. Barf. Melody wouldn't grudge me a sheet of paper. Actually, Melody wouldn't grudge me the blood to keep my heart pumping. But she was at Katrina's right now. I went into her room and I began opening desk drawers. The first was full of bat, uh, barrettes in a million colors, shapes, and sizes. The second contained pencils with erasers shaped like butterflies, ladybugs, and kittens. As I pulled out the third, a notebook caught my eye, its first page folded over. There were words and numbers on it, everything in li that little girly script of hers. For some reason they rang a bell with me even though they didn't make any sense. And then a bolt of recognition went through me like a shot from a plasma-based weapon. The codes, the passwords for the PAG webpage, and the Sycamore Middle School site. Suddenly, my, my legs wouldn't support me, and I sat down cross-legged on the aquamarine carpet in her room. The mystery hacker who'd called all those extra meetings, who had created Pajama Day and Crazy Hat Day, and had everybody raising money selling Pagger Pizza, who had rebuilt the PAG page and was filling it with rebellious messages even after the school had taken it down. That shadowy computer jock had never been Pavel. It was my own sister. Confusion filled me up like helium in a balloon. Why? Why would she do this? What was in it for her? She'd never been one of those red-hot paggers who couldn't live unless they were oozing good deeds all over the place. And anyways, those messages on the web page had started even before the PAG had gone big time. What was her angle? When the answer came to me, the helium turned to rage, lifting me up to hit the ceiling. What was in it for Melody? Absolutely nothing. She did it just to stick it to me. She'd figured out why I started the PAG, and she despised me so much that she deliberately turned my life upside down so she could sit on the sidelines and enjoy watching me squirm. Well, it wouldn't work. But as soon as that thought crossed my mind, I realized how wrong it was. It was working already. I was stressed to the point where I saw disaster around every corner. 
I couldn't play video games and I didn't even want to. I'd practically given up on Rule the World. Worst of all, I'd chased my two best friends away and my lifestyle? I had no life. Period. So it had worked. Score one for Melody. But she wasn't going to get away with it. I used our new front door for the first time then, barreling out into a clammy drizzle. I barely noticed the weather. I was like a heat-seeking missile, and my guidance system had one target, Katrina's house. I covered the five blocks in record time. I stomped onto the porch, a man with a mission. I'd probably hit the doorbell 15 times when Mrs. Bundy appeared, an annoyed expression on her face. All right, all right, I'm moving as fast as I... Her anger softened when she recognized me. Oh, Cam, hi. We're so sorry about what happened to the PAG. Another thing. Adults were treating me like I'd suffered a death in the family. I'd been sort of grooving on the extra kindness and understanding. Teachers hassled me less over long bathroom breaks. And Mrs. Mrs. Backward gave me free candy at Sweetness and, Sweetness and Light. Even our letter carrier made sure my gaming magazines didn't get crumpled in our mailbox. His seventh grade son was a former pagger. Now, though, I cut off Mrs. Bundy before she could start asking about my feelings. Is my sister here? A sympathetic smile. Yeah, she's with Katrina in her room. Go on up. She didn't even make me wipe my wet sneakers. I, I wiped them anyway. I no longer wanted special privileges because of my connection with the positive action group. I wish I'd never thought of those three words. I climbed the stairs and paused at the door, where a Star Wars poster declared, May the Force be with all who enter here. Ha! The Force was nothing compared to what I was about to unleash on my rotten sister. And I'm going to stop right there because that's the end of this first part. Here, uh, In a few minutes, uh, I will record the second part to this chapter of Cam Boxer.